Mothila Roswal, Asset Management Company, is joining us on the show. Manish, it's always a pleasure. Good morning. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, how are you placed now, Manish, in terms of uh, markets? Uh, inflows haven't been a problem. Uh, as we start 2017, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so uh, inflows has not been a problem. But the whole problem is uh, for the last two years, uh, we have not seen earnings growth at least on the benchmark, and this year doesn't look like to be any different. This year also we are working with single digit maybe earnings growth. And uh, next year we'd be seeing earnings growth more on account of uh, non-domestic uh, sectors and a positive base effect of 2017. So single digit earnings growth uh, and end, beginning of the end of monetary stimuli all over the world resulting into valuation contraction or P multiple contraction. It doesn't look that we are going to have a very good year in terms of the year, calendar year 2017. So it's going to be a tough year, I think. Hmm. Uh, Manish, uh, what are your thoughts uh, with regards to the FII's then? Because it's been a continuous pullout of funds barring around four sessions in December all the way since uh, November. Your sense in terms of whether that piece of the puzzle is going to see some respite in 2017, and if it doesn't, do you think that the DII picture will continue to sustain? Yeah, so it doesn't really make too much of a difference who is going to buy, whether the FIS buy or the DII is buy. It is all going to, it should be supported by valuations and it should be supported by earnings group. I mean, we have seen returns in the last two, three years, mainly on account of valuation expansion. I and mean, total shareholder returns is nothing but dividend yields plus earnings growth, plus percentage change in P multiples. In spite of not having the earnings growth, we saw P multiple expansion. That is how we saw market cap going up, both for stocks and the market as a whole. Now, in a rising interest rate scenario, beginning of the end of monetary stimuli all over the world, starting with the US, we are going to see P multiple contraction. So even if earnings growth due to demonetization were to revive back, maybe after two quarters or three quarters, what do you do with the P multiple contraction? I mean, uh, you know, the, the end result would be a summation of all these three factors. So, you know, last two years we have seen the FIS just bring in about three, three and a half billion dollars in Indian equities. I mean, it doesn't look like that FIS would have too much major incentives to pump money into emerging markets when developed markets would be, you know, firing on all cylinders, primarily the U.S. Manish, you uh, sound pretty ominous. I mean, <laughs> you're usually more upbeat. No, no, I think, you know, market as a whole would look like that. I mean, there would be individual stocks, obviously. So, uh -huh. But you're not very bullish about the aggregate market? Doesn't look like that way, Prashant, you know. Mm. Uh, we have had too much of a hope in terms of earnings growth over the last two, three years. I mean, it's, it's high time that the earnings growth came for the aggregate market as a whole. Mm. So which are the sectors which are looking uh, good from a valuation standpoint, which you might be nibbling into and maybe picking up some amount of incremental money, putting in incremental money? So whatever is cheap from a sectoral point of view, and there would be individual names obviously, whatever is cheap. So IT is cheap. Of course, earnings growth is, is small. You know, it's not very, very big, but valuations are okay. So a 10% earnings growth company with a 15P would be much more favored by the market than a 25% growth company available at a 50p. Mm. You know, this is how I think it's not only happening in India, this is happening all over the world. Mm. You know, value investing is more in vogue as opposed to growth invest. And growth investing is going to come back to India, but maybe after a hiatus of one, one and a half years. So I think pharma is cheap due to regulatory concerns, you know, IT is cheap and uh, you have some decent growth out there available at reasonable valuation. So these would be the top of the sector recall. Uh, you know, then you have regulatory sectors like the utilities, you know, or the BFSI, you know, where valuations are more comfortable. And this is more in the case of PSU Bank. The valuations are much more comfortable than the, uh, you know, than the earnings growth or the NPA picture. But that is how, uh, you know, some of these sectors would play out. Hmm. Do you see further downside in NBFCs from current levels? Yeah, the problem with NBFCs is that growth rates would come off and valuations are at peak. 
So, you know, obviously a 40% growth uh, uh, cannot be sustained in this sort of an environment. So, more like 20-25%, but they are still available at 4-5 book or maybe 25 to 30 P. And, you know, it's no point looking at FI 19 numbers. Today we should be looking at trailing 12 month numbers hmm. or FI 17 at best because the environment is so uncertain. So, even today they are available at 25 to 30 B, which is not very cheap. So, you know, that's how the situation is. There could be some more correction. Hmm. You know, uh, Motilal's uh, tagline is uh, QLGP. Hmm. Right? Uh, uh, G is growth. You're saying hmm. stay, uh, your message seems to be stay safe. I mean, don't go get into poor businesses, uh, good businesses. Hmm. Uh, but, you know, maybe 10-15% growth rates and uh, reasonable valuations. That's the kind of environment we find ourselves in, right? Yeah, so, you know, we are growth investors. Mm -hmm. You know, QGLP is more about growth investing yes. as opposed to value investing, which is more about value traps, buying value traps in Indian yes. context, you know. Yes. You know. So, what do you do? You, do you change your style of investing? The answer is a clear no. Mm -hmm. You know, you stick to your philosophy and live through the journey. Mm -hmm. Growth investing will come back to India, but mm -hmm. maybe uh, in 2018 you know, when we are preparing for general elections and a whole lot of money is being, you know, sent into the economic system in India by the, uh, you know, then we'll see some sort of a growth and even in the meantime, if some sort of growth revival happens, you know, that will be factored in with the historical P valuations on the market as a whole and you'll be preparing yourself for the next round of growth. So, but we'll have to live through that journey. Mm -hmm. Unless you're picking stocks yourself or, I mean, uh, there's some portion of your portfolio which will go into stocks, but is there a, tr a real trade-off between debt and uh, uh, fixed income and equities? Uh, right now then, I mean, if you're not very bullish on aggregate markets, stock markets. So, so what we do is we can take a cash call. Mm. I mean, generally we don't take a cash call, but if the situation becomes extreme in terms of valuation and growth, then maybe we can take some cash flows. Okay, Manish, just a quick last question then. When you said that you're, you know, that there's a caution from your side about 2017, what kind of year will it be for the Nifty then? Is it going to be a consolidatory range-bound kind of year or are we going to see further downside from, say, 7,800 levels? Or maybe we retest 9,000 in an optimistic scenario? So my sense is, you know, last budget day, we were at 7,000. Yeah. I mean, if we are closer to that 7,000 figure, all negatives would get priced in. Whether we'll go there, I don't know. Whether we can go there, definitely we can. And the chances are more than 50% that we can break on the downside rather than the upside. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, so 50-50 <laughs> then, right? Just one quick point. Uh, any thoughts on uh, microfinance companies, uh, Manish? I mean, you know, some people inherently yeah. dislike it. Some people say, well, they're just fine businesses. What's wrong with them? Where do you stand? And if you do like them, then something like a Bharat Finance, which is a leader, what are your thoughts? No, I can't comment about stocks, but mm. what I can tell you is that the going was all very good. Mm. And now with the demonetization, these NBFCs, MFIs were not allowed to accept the old notes. This has broken the momentum, it's a, you know, and, you know, NPAs and all those things are to follow. Given that and the valuations, there is more risk on the downside, you know, even today. Okay, fair enough, Manish. We're going to leave it on that note. Thank you very much for joining us.